Hello and welcome to the first topic in the Test Center IQ training series. Let's begin with an overview of Test Center IQ and then do an orientation of the common terms and basic navigation of Test Center IQ. Follow-on training sessions will focus in more detail on the individual areas. Each of these sessions will have a few slides and then a demo of the real product. Let's start with as well as management of test results. Unlike the current result views, now called classic results, Test Center IQ supports the storage of both live results and end of test result values. Additionally, Test Center IQ offers many other new features. A few of these are test health, which gives the user an easy to see high level view of the test status, time series graphs of live data and events for correlation of results, improved reporting capabilities, and correlation of data plane and control plane statistics, including events. Test Center IQ was released with STC 4.97, and it is in continued development with monthly releases. Classic results will continue to exist until the full migration is complete. Currently, there's no date set for the removal of classic results from STC. However, as you can see, many new protocols are already supported on Test Center IQ and many more are in progress. Test Center IQ is the platform for results not only from STC, but also from other new applications such as CloudShare. This slide illustrates a side-by-side -side comparison of classic results architecture and the additions made for Spirant Test Center IQ. Currently, Spirant Test Center IQ and classic results do coexist side-by-side. -side. Spirant Test Center IQ, though, has its own database and API. With Test Center IQ, a PostgreSQL database is installed for storing results. Spirant Test Center applications and the BLL layer of STC write results using the Test Center Results API to the Test Center database. The Test Center IQ web-based GUI retrieves these results using the same results service. Again, Classic Results and Test Center IQ operate side by side currently, but new results capabilities may only be implemented in Spirant Test Center IQ. Currently, no date has been set, but Classic Results will become obsolete over time. Now let's look at the integration of Test Center IQ into Spirant Test Center, that is STC usage. Test Center IQ can be launched from a pop-up dialog, which is shown the first time a user configures or loads a test. Click to launch Test Center IQ into the browser or hit cancel and continue and use classic results. At any time though, Test Center IQ can also be launched by using the button on the classic results toolbar. Either action, either of these buttons, will launch Test Center IQ into the default browser. As I mentioned, Test Center IQ will launch into the user's default browser. However, using the STC options menu, the user can control this. The user can select to force launch Test Center IQ into either Chrome or Firefox. This is primarily useful for the user who is using an unsupported browser um, default browser such as Edge. T Test Center IQ will display an Edge, but Edge is not currently an officially supported and tested browser. So this requires the user to um, change his settings if he would like to keep Edge as the default browser, but launch Test Center IQ in Chrome or Firefox. Moving on to Test Center IQ itself. There are two main pages in the application. The first is the results library. This view is the interface into the Test Center IQ database. The user can view high-level information about each of his test results 
and also manage the volume of test results. Each test result is a row in this view. Functions to import and export results in order to share them, delete results, organize results, check the status of your test results are all available in the result library. Click on any test name to open a result. The second main page in Test Center IQ is the results dashboard. This view shows the results of a single test. Let's start with first with the views. Each of the items circled in red is a view. Test Center IQ has well over 100 system provided views and more are coming. There are many types of views, time series chart views, test health views, uh, standard tables, uh, different types of drill down tables and other charts. We'll delve into those in detail in other training. For now, notice that a view is simply a way to look at the data stored in the database. Different views provide analysis of the test results in different ways. Continuing on with the results dashboard, a collection of views is called a profile. In this example, there are three views, again, in this profile. There can be currently up to 10 views in a single profile. The main area in the red oval shows a single profile. Again, a profile is just a collection of views. The blue bar at the top holds the test and profile information and navigation. The name of the profile and an indication as to whether it's been edited. In this case, I've made some edits, so it shows as not saved. The name of the test and the start time of the test. The test status a check mark for a completed test in this case. Remember, the test is stored in the database, so it can be viewed at a later time. Then to the right, some very useful men menus. We'll cover these in detail in another training session, but for now, the green arrow gives the status of the disk space available. Clicking it will show more details. The circle with the little teeth is called a gear menu, Useful actions for saving the profile and generating reports are located here. And lastly, the question mark menu, of course, uh, is an access for our Getting Started Help Guide, a very thorough guide uh, for all the features of Test Center IQ. This page also has a left panel, which is called a library, or rather libraries one with profiles and one with views. Test Center IQ is flexible. It provides both system profiles and system views which the user can drag into the profile workspace. These give the user building blocks to customize his view of results while also providing a starting point and guidance for that analysis. Let's cover one more essential keyword in Test Center IQ vocabulary while we're here, the snapshot. Notice the snapshot control on the profile bar and again in the time series view. What is the snapshot? In Test Center IQ terminology, a snapshot is used for capturing counters at a point in time. It's similar to the classic results action of save result. This snapshot data is not saved in a flat file on the user's machine, however. It is saved in the same test database as the live results for the test. In the previous slide, we looked at how snapshot data is viewed in the results, but how to create that snapshot. The user can manually save a snapshot using the save snapshot command found directly under the save result command in STC. Multiple snapshots can be taken and they can be named by the user. Snapshots can also be created in the sequencer using the save enhance results snapshot command. 
And lastly, uh, snapshots are automatically created uh, for each iteration when the test is run using one of the wizards which supports Test Center IQ. Currently supported are RFC 2544, 3918, and the custom test wizard. Let's turn our focus once again to STC. Earlier in the session, we discussed how to launch Test Center IQ. Additional options have been added to STC to allow, allow finer control of the statistics collection and test attributes. The related options can be found by selecting the Test Center IQ settings node at the top of the config tree in the left panel. This will display a choice of two tabs. The first is the results selector. The results selector is directed at the advanced or scale user. Default selections are already set here so that the user does not absolutely have to visit this tab, but this is where the user can optimize his test. The settings allow the user to control how much data is collected from the IL to the BLL and how often the data is collected. The collection interval specifies how often the data is collected. Additional actions available to the user are the Clear All Results button. This performs the same action as the Clear All Results in the classic view. It's also subject to the same options to the Clear that are found in the L2, L3 Results Options Clear Results settings. And next to the Clear option is another new button, uh, the new Test Center IQ database. This bu button is only active during live tests, and it's useful to create a separate result database without stopping the test. For example, the user does some initial setup of his test and initial testing. Now the test is running smoothly, and the user would like to capture those results and run a report against them. He clicks this button to end the current database and begin a new one. The second tab in the Test Center IQ settings allows the user to optionally name the test, the Test Information tab. The user can describe the test and add DUT information to the test. This information will show up not only in the result library of Test Center IQ, it can also easily be included in a report. Let's review the material by looking at a live demo. I've loaded a save configuration into Spirant Test Center, and now I have a dialog asking me where I'd like to view my results. By clicking this button, I launch Test Center IQ in my default browser. Let's look one more time at STC. The user can also launch Test Center IQ from the classic results toolbar. The welcome dialog is presented on the first use and can be dismissed with the don't show this message again. Options are to look at the quick start guide, which is the comprehensive help guide for Test Center IQ, or to go ahead and say no thanks, I'll get started on my own, or lastly, the first time user might want to take a tour. These are a few quick tips to orient the user to the major features on the result library. This points out that each test result is a row in the library. User can filter and search results, group the results. This is the navigation menu between the two main pages. And this points out the help menus. Now to review the results library. Each row is a test result. The completed tests are noted with the check mark status. This is my currently running test. As mentioned before, the results library has actions such as deleting results, importing results, exporting results for sharing with other users, generating reports, and the system status dialog.
which lets the user know how much data is being written to the disk and how much data is being used by the Postgres database. Returning to STC, the save snapshot command is located here and lets you name your snapshot or take the default snapshot. There's also the option to clear the results at the time of the snapshot. Other additions that we've covered in the slides are the clear all results button, the new test center IQ database button, which is only available during a live test for creating multiple result database entries. The test center IQ node in our config tree gives access to either the result selector for optimizing test performance or test information, which allows the user to name the test, describe the test, and add DUT information. The name and the hardware revision version are required for the DUT, other fields are optional. Uh, and these changes will show in the user's result library. This is a demo test, my new test Monday. This is my running test. So moving from the results library to one of my completed tests, I can click on the test name. Now the test is displayed in the results dashboard. As I mentioned, the top bar is called the profile bar or the profile navigation bar. Here's the name of the profile I'm currently using, and it is the system profile indicated by the icon. User profiles have a little person. This is the name of the test, which I set, and this is the time the test started. My test is completed, which is indicated by the check mark. Again, we have the system status view, which is the same view that's accessible from the results library. We have a gear menu, this time the actions are related to the profile itself and the help menu once again. In this area, we have the profile itself. In this case, if I scroll down, there are actually five views in my profile. Uh, for example, here's my time series view. Here's my test health indicator view. Here's my snapshot control, shows snapshots that we're taking for each iteration of this RFC test. By clicking on the snapshot, I see results for only that per period of time. On the left, the profile and view menu, profiles are categorized by system, user, and recommended. We'll cover this in detail in the profile and views training. And to toggle to the views, now we have a list of all the possible views that could also be moved into this profile space. So the centerpiece here is your profile workspace, and on the left are all the building blocks, which are profiles and views that can be used in this space. And once again, for further help, we have the quick start guide, which is accessible from the question mark menu. It's searchable, it covers all the features within Test Center IQ. Additionally, there are info boxes scattered across the application, as well as the quick tips that I showed earlier for just a few pointers when you first get started. Thank you, and join us for more Test Center IQ training presentations.